In New York State, people are struggling to pay their bills and make ends meet. Many have to make the tough choice between paying their energy bill and buying food. They have to choose whether to heat or eat. Of this group, seniors or people over the age of 60 are particularly vulnerable. About 1 million senior households in New York State today are facing this struggle. And that is a problem that our client, the New York State Energy and Research Development Authority, or NYSERDA, hopes to address. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miranda Alquist, and on behalf of my team, I am presenting our project, Increasing Senior Participation in New York's Home Energy Assistance Program. I would first like to thank our advisor, Professor McGinnis, for her support throughout this semester. Today, I am going to answer three main questions. First, what problem did NYSERDA ask us to address? Then, what was our approach for addressing this problem? And finally, what are our findings and recommendations? So what, was our what problem did NYSERDA ask us to address? Before we can understand this problem, we have to understand energy burden, or the percent of household income spent on heating and electricity. New York State's energy burden policy has a goal to limit energy burden to no more than 6%. This means that if someone receives $1,300 a month through Social Security, they cannot spend more than $78 a month on utilities. 2.37 million, or about a third of all New York State households, are low income. Of these, 88% are overburdened. Are overburdened. This shows that New York is far from reaching its goal and that high energy burden is a problem in the state. Of these low-income households, about one million contain a senior member. Seniors are more susceptible than other age groups to negative health impacts caused by improperly heated or cooled homes, such as respiratory conditions, heart disease, or arthritis. Seniors are also more likely than other age groups to be reliant on energy for medical equipment. Thus, seniors are particularly vulnerable to high energy burden. A participant in a focus group on energy assistance said the following about seniors in her community. They stopped buying prescriptions, and then they stopped buying food to pay their energy bill. And when they couldn't afford that, they didn't pay their bill, and they died. So we had a couple of years where we lost a lot of seniors. No one should be in this situation. And NYSERDA wants to ensure that fewer seniors are. This brings me to New York's Home Energy Assistance Program, which I will refer to as HEAP. HEAP is a federally funded, state-run program run by New York's Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance. The program provides monetary assistance for income eligible customers for heating, cooling, and emergency situations. The program is also mandated by law to prioritize vulnerable populations, including households with a member over the age of 60, seniors, under the age of 6, or with a disability. The program also serves as a gateway to other energy assistance programs, such as weatherization and energy efficiency programs. NYSERDA asked us to look at low-income senior household participation in HEAP. But why? This graph shows participation rates of HEAP-eligible customers in New York. The lines fluctuate based on the amount of funding that New York receives for the program each year. But the important thing that this graph shows is that apart from one anomalous year, senior household participation in HEAP was consistently lower than overall household participation. While NYSERDA recognizes that not all eligible households can be served due to funding limitations, they want to change the mix of households that are helped so that seniors are better served. Now, what was our approach for addressing this problem of low participation rates for senior households in HEAP? Through our research, we aim to answer the following two questions. What barriers are impeding low-income senior households from applying for HEAP? And what program and outreach changes can be made to increase their participation rates in the program? To answer these questions, we analyzed available data from federal and state databases and conducted a literature review. We also spoke with 25 national, regional, and local experts on energy assistance, 
15 through formal interviews, and some in person at the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP Action Day in Washington, DC. We also analyzed transcripts of two focus groups held in Syracuse, New York with HEAP participants and conducted senior surveys. Now, what are our findings and recommendations? Our first finding is that major data gaps exist. These include a lack of county level senior participation data, a lack of application data, how many people are applying and how are they applying. Then there's also a lack of outreach data to evaluate the effectiveness of different outreach strategies currently used for the program, such as flyers in social service districts or mass mailings to former HEAP participants. Based on this finding, our first recommendation is for NYSERDA to collect, compile, and analyze additional data. This first recommendation is critical, as many of our other recommendations depend on the availability of this data. Our second finding is that senior outreach is ineffective. Nearly half of the experts we spoke with specifically identified outreach as a problem and brought it up unprompted. And then over half said that in-person interaction with seniors is the most effective form of outreach. Based on this, our second recommendation is for NYSERDA to encourage targeted outreach to seniors. We recommend that they use the newly compiled county level senior participation data to determine which counties in the state are performing the best and then to evaluate the outreach strategies that they are using to determine best practices for outreach. And these outreach strategies can then be disseminated statewide. We also recommend that NYSERDA encourage in-person interaction with seniors for both outreach for the program and application assistance. And this will be primarily through organizations that already have relationships with seniors, such as senior centers. Our third finding is that multiple barriers prevent seniors from participating in the program. Nearly three quarters of experts identified stigma, misunderstanding, and or fear as leading seniors to be reluctant to participate. For example, the stigma could come from a senior not self-identifying as low income or wanting to accept assistance. And then two-thirds of experts identified small but surmountable application barriers. These include the application's length, it's 18 pages, including instructions, and the fact that it requires household income documentation. Based on this, our third recommendation is for NYSERDA to evaluate the feasibility of additional auto-enrollment for seniors. Auto-enrollment for the program already happens through food stamps, but it is possible that there can be additional programs that seniors are already participating in that we can do auto-enrollment through. And this is important because the easiest application is the one that you do not have to fill out. Our fourth finding is that New York State does not have enough funding to meet all of its need. Federal funding for the program requires annual approval, and thus it is never guaranteed. Because of this, every year, advocates gather in Washington, DC for the LIHEAP Action Day, where they lobby for the program's funding. And a, a group of us were able to attend, which was a great opportunity. And there we learned that, like many other states, New York runs out of funding each year and has to turn people away from the program. While a rough estimate, we calculated that New York would need to receive about double the amount of funding it is currently receiving in order to meet all of its need. Based on this, our fourth and final recommendation is for NYSERDA to provide data to strengthen advocacy and then allocate funding, encourage New York to allocate funding for energy efficiency and conservation education. Quantifying the amount and type of unmet need in the state will strengthen advocacy at events like LIHEAP Action Day. And then allocating funding for energy efficiency and conservation will help both households that receive HEAP and those that are turned away reduce their energy bills and make HEAP funding go further in the long run. Energy affordability is a key piece of New York's energy transition strategy, reforming the energy vision. Right now, much of the attention in the state is on the transition to renewable sources of energy. But it is critical that vulnerable populations are not left behind. We cannot have sustainability without equity. And New York has a lot of work to do to ensure that everyone is energy secure. We believe that together, 
our recommendations will help more seniors benefit from HEAP and New York's energy transition by increasing the amount of available data, encouraging more targeted outreach, evaluating the feasibility of additional auto enrollment, and then strengthening advocacy and allocating funding for energy efficiency and conservation. NYSERDA can increase the number of people benefiting from HEAP and other energy assistance programs. And then this will lead to fewer seniors needing to turn down their thermostats or forego buying food or medicine. Thank you all so much for your time and attention and I will accept any questions. Uh, great presentation. Um, you. You, you mentioned that uh, you think New York would need to double the amount of funding it mm -hmm. receives to meet its needs. How are you defining meeting its needs? Is that making sure that all eligible participants um, are below that level of 6% energy burden, or is there some other definition? That is what the calculation was looking at. If we could reach everyone who is low income and overburdened, we would need to receive about, I think it's like $748 million, which is about double what they're currently receiving. And that is, that's the definition, making sure that everyone who is overburdened is helped. And um, that's a challenge of with outreach and everything, but that's why we, we were interested in additional auto enrollment, because then more people can potentially be automatically enrolled. Thank you. Other questions? <laughs> Hello? Um, what are other uh, programs that seniors might be enrolled in mm. that could lead to auto enrollment? That's a great question. Um, so it's it's this program called EPIC that we're looking at. It's the, wait, I have the, the exact name here. One moment, please. The Elderly Pharmaceutical Insurance Coverage. And it is through Medicare Part D, and it's a special um, extra assistance program that helps um, seniors pay their the co-pays of their pharmaceuticals. So we spoke with um, an expert from New Jersey who worked for AARP New Jersey and led this auto enrollment process there. And it, it took a number of years, but they through this pro a similar program in New Jersey, they were able to add a question to the Medicare application that asked what type of heating source you used. And then through that, they were able to do additional auto enrollment. And then that led to over 40,000 new seniors receiving HEAP in their state. Thank you.